I always have been a scientist. My earliest recollections are of the same sort of interest in things and how things work and wanted to take things apart and put them together again. I wanted to be an inventor where I, uh, as, a, as a child, probably six year old, seven years old, something like that, reading about a comic strip about this person who was an inventor and I thought I, I would like to be an inventor. Particularly my uncle, for example, I think he was, he was an example both as a human being as well as a scientist uh, and he was a very gifted scientist. And my wife and I often talk about it, about our various people who wo have worked or are working with us and whether they have what we call the fire in them. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who come back at uh, the weekend and mm -hmm. they're always there and they're always asking the question and they can't bear not to know the answer. It's, it's many, it's mainly students at the undergraduate level, they come in and they say, what do we need to know? And I say to them, well, you need to understand the subject. I think what we're looking for is passion. I mean, I think you have to have some, uh, you have to have abilities, but I think if you, if you don't have the passion, all the abilities don't make any difference. There's no substitute for working hard. It, uh, I don't care how gifted a person is, those who don't work hard don't do well. Next morning you come and you see your result, and oh, it's not what you wanted. But it's exciting anyway, and <laughs> now I know what I have to do to make it work. <laughs> In a sense, I, I view my life as you know, that we're always playing. We're given the opportunity, somebody else pays for it, and we're given the opportunities. We have a bunch of puzzles, and mm -hmm. we're putting them together in different ways, and then all of a sudden you see the picture. The thing which mm -hmm. gives you pleasure is that you can think about it and say, I know why it went wrong, mm -hmm. or at yeah. least I've got an idea why it may have gone wrong. I can try it like this. I, I don't allow uh, radios in my lab. Uh, what I say to people is you should be thinking about what you're doing all the time, <laughs> not with part of your brain. And I do encourage the, to have a radio on in the animal house. So when you walk into the room, they're quite happy and relaxed. Yeah. They think I'm Radio 4. <laughs> and we teach our students a great respect for the animals th that they work with. It's a privilege to be able to work with animals and you have to re regard them as being precious and not to be wasted or trivialized. So I think there will, there, you know, until proven otherwise, we are very similar to mice uh, and mice are very similar to us. In a human population you know only as an association. This and this uh, genetic change is associated with uh, let's say high blood pressure, but in the mouse you can do an experiment to show that this and this uh, difference causes a change in blood pressure. I think uh, there is an enormous intellectual exercise for us in understanding the complexities and the, of the biological world in which we live. We are part of the biological world, but we're not all of the biological world.